You're listening to The Joe and Rosa Show, proclaiming the gospel through word and through song. Hi, and welcome to The Joe and Rosa Show. I'm Joe. And I'm Rosa. And this is our show, and we're going to have a lot of fun today. Today we have uh, Aaron Lynham on the phone with us. How you doing, Aaron? Good. How are you guys doing? We are doing just great. We're so excited to have you on our show, and I'd like to say, first of all, congratulations on your new book that you're writing. And uh, can you tell us a little bit, I know that you can't go too much into detail, but can you tell us a little bit about the book and its premise? Yes, definitely. And thank you. Uh, My book is called 936 Pennies, and it is based off of a gift that my husband and I received when our second son was a baby. And it's a jar of 936 pennies, and each penny represents one week that you have with your child from when they're born to when they turn 18. So the challenge is to take one penny out every week as a reminder that this time is fleeting and it's going fast, which is, you know, and a reminder that not many of us parents need. We already realize how fast the time is going. But it's this really strong visual reminder and um, a challenge to use that time well. So I was, we were given this jar, and I actually couldn't make myself remove those pennies because it was so strong of a reminder to me. It was just really heavy on my heart. And so what I did was I set up a second jar, and this is where we put the pennies each week as a reminder that we're not losing that time, but we're actually investing it into something beautiful. So that's the premise of the book, and it really just walks through our own stories and a scriptural basis for um, making the most out of the time that you have with your kids before they move away. I love that. I think it's very powerful. And like I said, I congratulate you on that. And I think that'll have a massive impact for the kingdom. So how much money is 936 <laughs> pennies? I'm sure you added it up. <laughs> Divide by 100, yeah, well, Joe. I actually had to go into the bank and get all those rolls of pennies. Oh, and wow. I never knew that pennies actually come in rolls of 50 cents. Oh, wow. Not a dollar. So <laughs> oh, wow. I had to go in and I had to call the banks ahead of time because they wouldn't actually have that many rolls of pennies. So it is nine dollars and 36 cents y'all well i guess yeah that's that's kind of obvious so at what (laughs) point did you spend the pennies and what did you buy with them oh joe stop okay (laughs) so like i said i I think that that is really great and uh, i can't wait to see what god does with it and now i you write on your blog and i i love your writing it's it's very i feel like it's a very restful sort of like i i read your blog and it sort of um helps me to slow down and think things through and i i've been reading on your blog lately about your and your family's decision to move out to colorado and it was something that um it struck me as um unusual in that most people are tied to uh, a sense of what they feel they have to do they have to go to this particular job and they have to earn their living in this particular way can can you tell us a little bit about what what that whole uh idea and journey sort of looked like for you and your family yes definitely um so a little bit of background on us my husband and i are originally from wisconsin we were born and raised mostly there and we met at a bible school there and married and had two kids and then we actually had some opportunities open up for us to move to kansas city missouri So we landed there for a couple of years, and we bought our first home, and my husband had a great job, and we found a church that we loved and made friends, and we were really getting established, but we both kind of felt like something was lacking and that our souls were just longing for a little bit more. So uh, when we were expecting our third son, we have three boys within four years, we're kind of crazy. Oh, wow. (laughs) And going crazy. (laughs) But uh, so we were expecting our third son, and we went on a little trip, just my husband and me, and our little boy was in me. And uh, we began writing out a list of family values, things that we wanted to make a priority in our life and our family. So these are things like, um, well, I have the list with me. They were things like exploration. We wanted to inspire adventure, wonder, and respect through exploring outdoors and traveling. And another one was education. We wanted to teach our kids the why behind what they were learning and teach things like problem-solving skills and decision-making. And we wanted to encourage uh, hands-on learning and things like journaling and photography. We also wanted to instill with them financial stewardship and a priority on health, nourishing our bodies and physical activity. And uh, most importantly, uh, a family value of faith. 
but things like modeling to them what a generous life looks like and following Jesus' commands and having family devotions. So we wrote this list, and we kind of started feeling like, you know what, Kansas City might not be the optimal place for us to make these a priority. And we enjoyed Kansas City, and we were doing fine enough there, but like I said, we just really felt God stirring in our hearts that he had more for us. And even now we can look back and see that those two and a half years in Kansas City, he had us there for a reason. Mm -hmm. But at this time, we really felt him releasing us from that. And we really felt like he was saying, okay, now you guys can go ahead. You can move on to what I have for you next. And uh, so a year before that, my husband had taken our family on a vacation to Colorado. He spent some time there in high school. And, uh, but I had never been there. I had never really spent time in Colorado or the Rocky Mountains. So he took us there for 10 days, and I fell in love, like absolutely head over heels in love with the mountains. And he had always talked about them, and I never got it until I was there. So uh, after those 10 days, we went back home to Kansas City, and for about six months, we just kind of joked with each other about, you know, maybe someday we'll live out there. And then finally one day we looked at each other and he said, If we're going to do this, we need to do this now because our kids are young and we're in a place where we can make it happen. So we knew it would be a lot of work, but we also knew that we had to do it. So we've actually been here four months now in Colorado. We just bought our home here, and my goodness, has it been a crazy four months. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But we don't regret it for a second, you know, despite the hard work that it took to get here. Well, it's, it, it, it's always beautiful to move to a mountainous area. I know we live in a mountainous area, and uh, I guess you have the distinction of living in the other state that John Denver wrote a song about. He wrote songs about West Virginia and Colorado, so. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yes, we live in the state of West Virginia, and I, I absolutely love that because it's purpose based you're talking about what it is that you want for your children and for your life following after Jesus. And you're talking about things like stewardship. You're talking about education. You are instilling things in your children and building your life around that. And I can see his blessing all over it. And um, I know that once you got out in Colorado, you were writing about how God has been stirring something in your heart regarding the homeless. Could you tell us a little bit about what that has been like? Yeah. So, like I said, one of our family values that we wrote down was modeling for our children what it looks like to live and give generously. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when we got out here to Colorado, very quickly I felt a strong conviction to help with the homeless population here. And I think it's because you see them everywhere here. We drive to the coffee shop or we drive to the grocery store, and there's men, women, children, whole families Mm -hmm. on the curbside with signs just needing help. And uh, so I would drive by them, and I would feel this strong pull to go back and help. But, you know, maybe the baby was wailing in the back seat, or we had to get home for nap times, and I would keep going. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it, it really started to bother me that we weren't doing anything to help. And uh, my husband and I were in the car one day, and he mentioned that he had been thinking a lot about the homeless population. And I had not at all mentioned anything to him about how I was feeling. And usually when we're both thinking about the same thing and don't know it, I feel like that's God saying, mm-hmm. you know, you guys need to make a move here together as a team. So, uh, but we still didn't know what we were going to do. I kind of felt at a loss because as a mom of three very young children, I can't necessarily go and volunteer hours of my time at a homeless shelter or something like that. The logistics just aren't there with getting a babysitter or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, um, I started to think about, okay, what can I do? And the opportunity came up one day. We were actually celebrating our youngest son's first birthday. So I packed a picnic lunch and a birthday cake, and we went out hiking in the mountains because that's what we do now. And so uh, we were at a little trail, and I saw a homeless man. And he was laying in the middle of the parking lot. Um, well, actually, like, right at the edge of it. And we had driven by this area before, and there had been about a dozen homeless people there. And I knew that I couldn't necessarily help a dozen homeless people. I didn't have the supplies or whatnot. But on this day, there was only one. And I knew in my heart, okay, I can help one. We have a loaf of bread, we have enough sandwich makings in the cooler, and we have this birthday cake. 
pizza. I made him up a plate of food. I cut into the birthday cake. He actually got the first slice of my son's first birthday cake. And uh, I asked my husband to take it over to him. And the man, he was um, obviously passed out, not quite there, under the influence of something. But my husband set the plate of food down next to him and walked away. And a few minutes, I looked back, and he's enjoying his lunch. And, you know, the biggest thing was I had to get past my judgments and preconceptions because part of us moving out here is that my husband and I had to work really hard. We started our own business and we just made it so that we were in a place financially that we could make this move. So at nature, we're very hard workers. And when I see people who end up in homelessness, sometimes I'm tempted to wonder how they got there or maybe they're not working hard enough for whatnot. And I had to just set those aside. And realize, you know what? It doesn't even matter. This person needs help, and I am in a position to help them. So that's what it's really been is just being prepared to help people. A lot of times it looks like um, having gift cards for grocery stores in the car or when we don't have them and we see someone, we stop at the grocery store and we bring it back to them. So it's not necessarily this huge plan. I'm going to pack sandwiches and go help everyone downtown. A lot of times it's just being ready to help a person when you see the need arise. And I think that's a very beautiful example, and it may be also why God has moved you there, because he knew what he'd be stirring in your heart, also that he's given you a voice. You have your blog, and today you're on this radio show, and whatever other things that God obviously has in store for you to uh, expand that uh, vision to other people so that they would see that um, there are people that they can be the hands and feet of Jesus to. And I think that is absolutely beautiful. And so to those of you who are listening today, I would really urge you to um, go to Erin Lynham's blog. It will be a blessing to you. I promise you can read her blog post that went viral, by the way, about her 936 pennies and about the journey that their family has been taking to Colorado and about the... uh, passion that God has been stirring within her heart to take notice of the homeless community to extend help in the various ways that God has supernaturally um, set that up for her to do so. Um, And Erin, could you share with our audience where they can find your blog and how that's spelled, please? Yeah, definitely. You can find my blog at www.erinlinum.com and that's E-R-Y-N L-Y N as in Nancy U amazonmike.com. All right. Well, it has been a pleasure having you on our show today. I thank you so much for being our guest. Yes. Thank you, guys. It's been an honor. Thanks. Well, that was an enjoyable interview. And if you want to see more, you can check us out on lifeinsidethehouseontherock.com. I think there's a couple W's before that. And, uh, well, I enjoyed that. How about you, Rosa? I sure did, too. And real quick, before I um, say that, I, we can also be found on Facebook at facebook.com slash Rosa Hopkins Writing. Also, we have a YouTube channel, www.youtube backslash Joe and Rosa Hopkins. And, yes, I completely love the idea of intentionality spending your days with purpose following god's plan seeing what it is that he has not just for you your spouse your children but your community because anywhere you go we are representatives we are ambassadors of god himself and when people see us living out the gospel that is powerful and it draws others to us but ultimately to jesus christ who is the one who is uh, light, the light of this world. And that's why we're supposed to be a light to our community. And friends, it is the best thing to be able to to spend some time uh, basically just living out your days for God. So thank you so much for joining this day. Take care. God bless. Thank you.